and let's put in a authorization header and then we'll type in basic and paste that in there and then let's try just restarting the app and then now we're syncing so now it worked and we're gonna paste okay so that just automatically saves and then we can come back and let's see if we can communicate and we can recently i showed you guys how to set up your own pangolin tunnel on a free oracle vps which is a great alternative to using cloudflare tunnel especially for our image application because the Cloudflare tunnel limits our file upload size to 100 megabytes. That means that our videos are not gonna be making it through. However, it's still an easy way to set up uh, public access. And that's why I did show the tutorial on how to bypass uh, a zero trust layer on Cloudflare so that your image application could still get past that uh, Cloudflare zero trust sign-in page that otherwise, if you didn't have those authentication headers that image supports, we wouldn't be able to bypass that layer. There's also of course the option for MTLS, which I've shown a video on how to do that as well. So for this video, I just wanna cut right to the chase. We already have Pangolin set up. We already have our image server set up, self-hosted. If you haven't done either of those and you want to follow along in this tutorial, please check out the links in the description below to get up to speed on having Pangolin and Image set up. We're going to be setting up the same type of zero trust layer inside of Pangolin that's going to require us to sign in into the zero trust proxy before we can get to Image. But Pangolin also has support for custom header bypass. So I'm going to set that up and then that way in the mobile application, we're gonna be able to set those custom headers to get past our Pangolin Zero Trust layer. And we have a fully protected, publicly accessible image application. So please like and subscribe to the video and let's get on into it. Okay guys, so I'm already signed into my Pangolin admin console. You can see that I already have our resource here to go to image if I click on that link. Take me right to my image server. This is available on the public internet as we speak. There is no protection on our Pangolin proxy layer. And just in case you missed it on my last video, I did show you how to set up this domain with full encryption through the Pangolin tunnel so that even if you were paranoid that Oracle was spying on you or your VPS provider was spying on you, you could still pass only encrypted traffic all the way through your tunnel through a non-standard port. So if you wanna do that, watch that video. However, this is not going to be relevant at all to our bypass video because we need to have a regular HTTPS resource in order to have our zero trust layer in Pangolin. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we protect this site, basically meaning that we're adding zero trust to the site. I'm gonna to go to my resource settings and then go to authentication. And then I'm going to use the platform SSO. So admins can always access this resource. You can um, give access to a particular role if you're adding users to your Pangolin access itself. So let's go ahead and save this that we're going to use SSO. And there are um, a number of different authentication methods to essentially bypass our SSO. We're not bypass it, but just allow someone to access. So you can just give an arbitrary password to access image. You can give a pin code to access image, and you can either just add header off right here. So let's go ahead and try out this uh, methodology. This is not uh, the methodology I was intending on de demonstrating today, but uh, I wanna go ahead and test it out. I suspect that um, it will work. The only concern I would have is if it will continue to work, if image is gonna store the authentication uh, username and password, or if it will wipe it or clean it after the first session. So let's go ahead and try that out, okay? So we're gonna just do a user, let's just do Thomas and Thomas. So this is just arbitrary username and password does not uh, correlate to a Pangolin user at all. So we're gonna set that. Now we have the header authentication enabled. And then we can go back into my app. Let's go ahead and put 
Thomas Olin, Thomas, username and password, at the resource image.thomaswalltech.com and go to next. And you can see that it actually got me through the SSO layer here. Let's go ahead and put in my username and password. Make sure I spell that correctly. Okay, it pulled the image information, hit enable backup. We've got our screenshots backed up. Now, if I log back in on the web, we can see that those screenshots are there. Let's uh, back up our camera. Okay, and I just took a picture of my keyboard here. So you can see it hasn't gone yet. It's like still trying, still hasn't backed it up yet. So let's try closing the app. I'm gonna go ahead and reopen it. It's syncing, it's thinking. So even though I'm still able to connect to the server, I'm not totally sure if it's working the way that I want. Now, one thing that I could do with the basic auth is include this as a custom header in the same way that I was going to with my custom header approach. To do this, we would get a base64 encoding of that username and password. So I'm logged into my server here, and I'm just gonna issue this command, echo dash in username and password. So that's Thomas, Thomas, and then pipe to base64. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna send it to myself. I'll just send it over signal. And then let me just go ahead and copy that and then go into image and let's see if we can fix this by going to settings, advanced, custom headers, and let's put in a authorization header and then we'll type in basic and paste that in there. And then let's try just restarting the app. And then now we're syncing. So now it worked. So this is actually a really great way to do it with the custom header approach. I think you do just need to, it's it's not good enough to just put the username and password in the URL. You need to actually put it in the custom headers because I don't think image is actually persisting that username and password and sending it with the headers to upload at least. And that's why it wasn't syncing. But as long as you just convert it to base64, you're able to basically pass in custom basic authentication and you can set that username and password here uh, you can convert it to base64 for your users and then just tell them to set that authorization header and that's going to authenticate them through pangolin with every single request so let's just go ahead and try taking another picture real quick let's just take a picture of my mouse here open up image got the mouse you have the syncing action and it is synced. Go back over to image and you see we are there. So the header authentication is a great way to do this. Now let me show you another way. So we can remove the header off and then you can see that that is going to break my mobile app. Let's see if I restart it, boom, it just pushed me out. Now I'm gonna show you another way to bypass and that is with shareable links. So with a shareable link, we come over here and we can say this is image mobile phone. You can set an expiration for this. The only thing I don't like about this is that it gives you multiple options for bypassing and you cannot select which option you want. So let's just go ahead and choose never expire. This is basically, and I can select the resource that I want to access and then we're gonna create the link. So this is uh, what I wanna focus on is the access token usage. So here, let's look at usage example. Okay, so there's three different things going on here. We have a pangolin link that is going to take us to our image and bypass SSO. And then we have an image link, our original resource URL with a token as a git parameter and that is going to bypass however using headers is recommended over query parameters when possible because query parameters and urls are going to be logged in server logs they are not particularly a secret it's more of security by obfuscation so the best approach is to use the request headers so 
I'm just gonna totally ignore this link. I'll show you how it works. Uh, I'm gonna ignore this link and we're gonna copy and paste this. Let me just send this to myself via signal again. Okay, I have a P access token ID. Come in here and edit it so I can select. So I'm gonna copy the token ID and then an image we can set custom headers again. So let's go to advanced custom proxy headers. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this authorization one, paste that, copy that ID, create another header for the token itself, copy, paste, and let's grab that token, copy, and we're gonna paste. Okay, so that just automatically saves, and then we can come back, and let's see if we can communicate, and we can. So let's try signing in again. Okay, got the credentials in there, and we are in again, so. Is there any difference between using basic auth headers or custom headers? So generally speaking, I, I wouldn't ever really want to use the URL or the query parameter unless it, unless it truly was a uh, temporary link with expiration on it uh, because I just don't want this getting passed around on the internet if I'm really valuing the protection of this resource. What you could do if you want to make it, you know, really easy is your share links are also going to hit the um, single sign on page. So let's do this again. And you can see we're here. If you want your share links to be a little bit more accessible, I do feel like Pangolin is providing us more options for uh, bypassing or authentication. And maybe Cloudflare has these options, too. I just feel like it's very easy to get there in pangolin so if we look at our protected image we can go in hit edit authentication and uh what's cool is that you can do an email whitelist so you just have to set the smtp values in your pangolin config file and then this will create an email whitelist and then you can specify whatever email address is they get a one-time password when they when they select uh, the option so what that whitelist looks like is basically this, and then you come over to email, put your email, and then you'll get a one-time code. Uh, but we could also just add a simple pin. Um, and then of course this could be temporary too. So if I did one, 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 enable pin, oh, it has to be six, okay. Six ones, and then you, sh you send your share links to your family after your family vacation. Just tell everyone that the pin code is uh, six ones, and then they'll be able to get past that share link. So you can even see if I try to get to image, now I have the pin option. So do that for this resource. And then I'm in, I have to sign in because I'm actually just logging into image, but I do, I want to just demonstrate creating a share link. So I want to share the photos that I took today. You can specify a custom URL right here. Um, Password is great. Let's just say that the password is going to be six twos, two, three, four, five, six. So we're protecting the share itself. Don't really have to do this. In fact, because I'm already password password protecting through Penguin at the proxy layer, you can also password protect at the image share layer too. Uh, same with expiration. So let's just say I'm going to give my family a week to uh, download and upload photos and create that link. So we've got our link right here. Let's go ahead and copy that. And let's open up a new incognito window and paste that share link right there. And you can see we've got to get through Pangolin again. So I'm gonna to go to the pin. I told everyone that that share was uh, six ones. And now we're getting to the share. And because I made the share password required, I'm gonna do six twos. Again, I probably wouldn't do this to my family. And then uh, now you've got the photos. So we are putting a barrier at the proxy layer. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I showed you two different ways to bypass Pangolin Zero Trust layer in our own VPS. One being a basic authorization header in which we just created a username and password and made our image user put that in as a custom authorization header, and then it authenticates every single API request. The second method that we did was using the share link 
inside of Pangolin, and that lets us create access headers that we can also put into image. Um, I know that I keep talking about image, but this also applies to several other applications. You can do this with Symfonian. You can do this with Symfonium on Android. Unfortunately, iOS does not have Symfonium, but Symfonium also supports custom headers, which is great. Oddly enough, Paperless on iOS supports custom headers, but Paperless on Android does not, so keep that in mind. And on the top of my head, that's all I can think of. Um, I do wish more mobile applications made for self-hosted backends supported custom headers because it does just make it so much easier to se secure our backend resources uh, behind Zero Trust when we are able to just easily authenticate our mobile apps with the, uh, the proxy layer in the cloud. Uh, so just a message to uh, any developers out there for mobile applications to self-hosted backends. Add that support for custom headers. Uh, if you're making a, it, it really shouldn't be that difficult for a native client application to add this support. You should just be able to have an interceptor in your application that just intercepts all API requests and appends those custom headers that are put into the mobile app. So please do that. It is awesome. Image, so glad Image is being the gold standard for supporting um, self-hosters with the custom headers, with MTLS. Uh, they're giving us so many options. So thank you, Image Team. So stick around. I have a lot more Pangolin tutorials coming up. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. See you then.